classroom. Your Rosa got you your permit, you assembled a team, and you were gonna show up and do your first Good News Club. And you have to have a plan for classroom management. And it starts with establishing your authority in the classroom. Um, I, uh, some of you know I write for Christian radio programming. I was just writing something about the lack of respect among teenagers. <laughs> okay, so you already know that kids grow up in a disrespectful society. They are not going to catch respect from the culture around them. In fact, most of us adults are not respectful to one another or to our leaders. So it's not something they're going to sort of naturally do. They need to be trained and taught how to be respectful. And it is important uh, for this reason. As you establish the authority in the classroom, you're reinforcing the authority of the family, the father and the mother over the children. We are taught to be respectful of our government leaders, our national and local leaders, and uh, obey them as citizens. In the church, we have leaders who we need to be respectful for and stop bad-mouthing when we disagree with them, um, and instead courage, encourage and pray for them uh, as members. And and when they go to get a job, they need to know how to be respectful of their authority. These are useful tools and life lessons that these kids need. So you're doing them a blessing by teaching them that you have the authority in that classroom. You're also reducing distraction and helping them to have a good time um, knowing that there are boundaries and rules to keep them safe. So establishing authority is very uh, important. Now, I'm a naturally rebellious person, so I totally understand like the independent, spunky kid who wants to ask all the questions, who doesn't, doesn't necessarily want to believe everything you say, I'll take it all day long, that's fine. Those are critical thinking skills. Uh, but they need to be uh, dealt with in a respectful way. You have a question, great. Ask it respectfully, raise your hand, wait your turn. You, you don't believe what I say? Great, go read it in the book. Read the Bible for yourself <laughs> and find out for yourself. Encourage those kids in the right direction. But classroom management is important. And it starts before the first day of club. So you need to be prepared. And you can obviously do that by praying, <coughs> creating a welcome environment, meet with your team ahead of time, and plan out the day and the activities, who's doing what part. Make sure, as the if you're the lead teacher, that you clearly communicate to your helpers what you want them to do. Don't assume that they know what to do in the club if some kid gets up and then start, move, starts moving around. You need to have a plan already in place so that the teacher can continue teaching and the helper says, I know Miss Abby wants me to go and sit next to that young man and quietly you know, pat him on the back and ask him to be quiet and, and or ask him to move to another seat or whatever you're gonna do, um, already have that established uh, so that you can you know, have a successful club. We're gonna greet them warmly. We're gonna greet them individually and one of the things you can use in club are your up rules. Um, this is just, you know, sit up, listen up, look up, zip up, hands up. It's just helpful to remind the kids. And if you're, if you have a squirrely, loud week, the next week just reinforce it. Use the obedience song. Da, 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 da. They need a reminder, and we do too sometimes. Um, so that's your preparation. Know your role in advance. Have a plan. Have a game plan, and understand that. While you want to make a connection and be kind, you need to establish yourself as the authority. That doesn't mean you're yelling, you're being rude, we don't do that. Doesn't mean, you know, you do whatever I say no matter what. No, we are gonna be a loving servant leader to, uh, who uh, understands that we're enforcing the rules for the benefit of everybody. Okay, um, and then during class, there are important skills to learn about classroom management. Um, keep it interesting. We have to deal with the reality that these little kids are at the end of their school day, they are tired. Uh, raise your hand if you've had a kid fall asleep in your good news club. Oh, that's all I have to, don't be offended. These little kindergartners are exhausted. You know, just let them let them nap in the back of the room. It's okay. Um, but keep it interesting for those who want to pay attention. It's helpful. Unlike what we did today, where you're just hearing me talk for way too long. Um, ha intersperse different teachers. Have somebody else come up to pray. Have somebody else lead the songs. It keeps it interesting. Uh, make sure that when you're talking, you're using inflection and emotion and catching their attention um, so that they can continue to stay on track with you. And tracking is something that Marianne uh, presented to us years ago. I don't know why it just clicked with me. Is that remind the kids that they're going to get so much more out of Good News Club if they sit up and make eye contact with the teacher at all times because that way I know you're listening and you're going to hear better. You're going to do better at Good News Club and it's good for them. And so tracking, you're gonna watch me. You can even practice, okay, well, I'm gonna walk over here and I wanna see all the eyes following me over here. That's very good. And I'm gonna 
people over here. You guys are going to keep looking at me. Are we looking at our neighbors? No. Right? So every once in a while, if you teach them these principles, practice a little bit, then you can just say, are we tracking? You know, like, get their attention again. Uh, use different emotions. Ooh, get, get excited about it. Uh, get up and get moving. Kids need to get up, and we will train you every single week on different ways to get the kids up, to do activities, to remind them to get the wiggles out so that they're ready to sit down for the times that you need them to be calm and peaceful, like the lesson. Um, and then I talked about a little bit, I'm really big on critical thinking and the Socratic method. Critical thinking mean, meaning that we don't just tell them it's true because I said so. I don't want these kids to think that I know everything about the Bible. I want to always point them to God's word. If you don't know the answer, do not fake it and wing it. It's okay to say, I'm not sure about that. I'm going to look it up for you and I will get back to you. And get back to them. Get back to them next week or later in the hour or whenever you need to. Find the answer in God's word. Don't make it up for yourself. If you don't know, just pause and, and, and let that one you know sit. Go back and pray about it. Because um, the worst thing you could do is give them a false answer because you didn't want to be embarrassed that you didn't know. And then they come back and say, they're, they're not telling me the truth. Right? We always tell them the truth. Always. Always tell them the truth. That's so important. And that establishes your authority, too. They know they can trust you. They know you're on their side. They know that you will be honest. And if you make a mistake, apologize. Oh, I mean, if we all just speak. Oh, I misspoke back there. I said 300. It was actually 500. Look how I know. I, I opened my Bible and I showed them. It's right here. Who's right? You know, if, if I say something, God says something, who's right? Who wins? God wins. It's easy, right? And it's okay. Socratic method is something Marianne does expertly, and that's asking questions. Socrates would have his students gathered around him, and he guided them through his topic and his discussion point by asking questions. And you will hear Marianne do that. It's very helpful to keep the kids engaged. Um, just asking, you know, when you're reviewing the lesson, you know, what was the name of the brother who got sold into slavery? His name was? Joseph, we're going to get all freshed up on that. <laughs> and then it keeps the kids engaged. So feel free to ask lots of questions. But don't do it if it's making it drag on too long. You can't do it so frequently that you're not getting to the rest of your lesson. Um, these are just some tips for getting attention with the kids. Use humor. You might want to have a joke handy, like, why was the crab? Oh, no. Why did the crab not want to share? Because he was self shellfish. <laughs> I don't know. Um, have something fun. Uh, if you have a puppet, maybe I, <laughs> Rabbi, Eddie, whatever you call your puppet, kids love it. Um, if you have a distracted kids, kid, it's not a, you don't have to make it a negative thing. Just I have such a better seat for you right over there. I'm going <laughs> to pick you up from where you are, and I'm going to move you right over there. You're just going to love it. It's going to be great. Uh, bribery works, and by that I mean um, candy. Every once in a while, put your hand in a bag of candy and hold it up and ask a question. And you'll see everybody track with you all of a sudden. Oh, what is she going to say next? Can I get candy? Um, I'm okay with bribery. If you're not, I'm sorry. <laughs> my dad used to pay me to memorize Bible verses. I think that was a well-spent investment at this point in my life. <laughs> so I'm, I appreciate that. But I didn't want to do it. I did it because he paid me. Um, <laughs> the call and response that a lot of the public school kids know is, one, two, three, eyes on me. One, two, eyes on you. Let's try that one more time. One, two, three, eyes on me. One, two, eyes on you. The kids know it. Or you can do the clapping or some other things like that. Uh, kids still love competition. Okay, who's going to be sitting down in their seat and ready to listen quietly? Is it going to be the boys or the girls? And then you kind of watch them. Oh, it's usually the girls. But uh, <laughs> we, we love those boys. Uh, and if you hear me touch your head, if you hear me clap three times, you know, Keep going, those are just some ways. And throughout the year and the training, you don't need to learn them all now. We'll give you those little tips and we'll do some reminders on that. Um, make sure all the kids that are registered come with complete and signed forms. Um, maybe Rosa will talk a little bit later about how that works out. Sometimes they forget their forms. What do we do? Do we call the parents? Things like that. Um, you need to know what the school's rules are. Oh, I forgot, this is from last year, so I put the COVID rules. But anyway, find out whatever the school's rules are. We want to leave the place better than we found it. We always want to clean up thoroughly. Um, if there's a problem, you know, one year somebody said we left a piece of trash. I don't think we did. I don't care. I gave them a gift the next week. Doesn't, you know, apologize and give them a week. Apology doesn't cost them anything. Um, we want to do our best to be welcome there and uh, be a welcome visitor. 
Uh, communicate with the school office about your schedule. If you're gonna be skipping a week or change something up, make sure they know in advance and be friendly. Okay, let's see. Oh, and of course, uh, the good news club rule, which Rosa really goes over is you have to have two adults in the classroom with you at all times with the kids. This is great because when you have situations that come up like uh, when Rosa was meeting with the school principal where I taught for 15 years and she said, oh, uh, you know, that I had taught something well, that's fascinating because I was never alone with the kids, so there'd be another person who would know that. And she'd also s never sat in the classroom with one single minute, so I have no idea how she would have done that. Anyway, it's for your protection so that if somebody says something happened, you have another adult who can verify and affirm what you've been doing in the classroom. So that's important. All right, that was kind of a quick classroom management. We'll get to it more in this year, but that's all I have for today. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.